The uh, next slide that I want to focus on goes um, past the times of slavery, and I now want to talk about the lie, or really lies, involving um, segregation and the Ku Klux Klan. Now, segregation and the KKK kind of went together. The KKK was not the uh, vehicle of segregation. The KKK was uh, essentially a paramilitary organization, the guys in the white hoods. Uh, the, this was an institution dedicated to racial subjugation, preventing not just blacks, but even whites who were seen as Republicans or allies of blacks, prevent them from voting uh, in the South, and then also going after uh, black criminals who were seen as evading the justice system. And so the KKK essentially became a lynch mob, or became a, a vigilante organization that would terrorize people, uh, including people who had not had uh, a fair trial and uh, would say, all right, we won't leave it to the justice system. We'll go get this guy ourselves. So uh, an organization devoted to racial terror and terrorism. But uh, again, when the left writes about the KKK, they seem to imply, one, this is some sort of American organization. It's just we got to blame the country. America is responsible for the KKK. But again, without asking which America, which Americans, who started the Klan, who, who promoted it, who fought against it, who blocked it, who shut it down, and then who started it up again? Well, the answers to those questions are known, but the left does a pretty good job, really, in trying to hide all this by not talking about it. And instead, what they say is that today, today, uh, the Klan is somehow pro-Trump is for the Republican Party. Today, the, um, the sort of white supremacists are on the right. Now, this is not even true. Uh, white supremacists today are not on the right. In fact, there is absolutely no evidence that uh, Klansmen or skinheads or any kind of uh, white supremacists are, have voted disproportionately Republican or are in the Trump column. The left relies here on they'll they'll go to a rally, they'll find one guy waving a Confederate flag and they go, see, this guy's obviously a Trump supporter. Uh, or they will find a um, uh, an article that is published in some Klan leaflet. The Klan doesn't really have any more any kind of systematic method of communication, but they put, they put out these sort of, they're nothing more than eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper with scrawlings on it. Look at this Klan paper in Oklahoma that seems to promote Trump. Well, the problem with this kind of thing is that when you're talking about organizations that number some thousands, maybe a few tens of thousands of people, it makes no sense to find one guy and use one leaflet or one photo and say that's an indicative of anything. You need to have a survey. You need to have a poll. You need to have some record of voting habits. And the left has produced none of that. Now, Historically, the Klan was very clearly an organ of the Democratic Party, and that's not even my view. The progressive historian um, uh, Eric Foner writes that for decades, the KKK, the Ku Klux Klan, was the domestic terrorist arm of the Democratic Party, end quote. So it's explicitly admitted and stated. A, um, it was Nathan Bedford Forrest, a um, delegate to the Democratic National Convention, um, an influential Southern Democrat who started the Klan. And the Klan became this terrible, violent organization in the 1860s and 1870s. Uh, and then there was a Republican mobilization against the Klan. And the Klan was d disbanded. It was shut down. And under, I believe it was Grant, the Force Act was passed, which was a federal act that res greatly restricted, limited, and outlawed, in many cases, Klan activity. So it looked like the Ku Klux Klan was done, was finished. And then again, weirdly, in the early 19th century, the Klan began to make a comeback and began to make a comeback largely as a result of a film called Birth of a Nation. In fact, when I made the film Death of a Nation, I had in mind the background of Birth of a Nation. Birth of a Nation was a essentially a pro-KKK propaganda film. It was screened in Woodrow Wilson's White House for Woodrow Wilson's cabinet. Now, let's notice when we talk about Woodrow Wilson, we're talking about the nation's first progressive president. And this was the guy, a progressive Democrat, who 
uh, not only um, screens the film, but then praises the film, talks about it like, wow, this is like writing words and images with lightning. In other words, it's so emotionally powerful. And then you begin to see a clan revival. And this time, the clan revival isn't just in the South. It begins to spread to the Midwest. It occurs in some northern cities. So the nationwide revival of the clan is also done by the Democrats. And so when people talk about the sort of sordid history of lynchings and so on, you've got to remember that these were done by the Democrats. Uh, Democrats now try to say, well, we don't really accept responsibility for them. The party switched sides. I made the point before that that's not true, but even if it were true, it wouldn't make any difference. It, it doesn't, you are not absolved of a crime that you did because you subsequently, quote, switch sides with some other guy, nor does your guilt somehow transfer to that guy. Um, you still did these things. You're, you started the clan, you revived the clan, you did the lynchings, and so on. And, um, and I'll talk in the next segment about about the very peculiar, not only the history of segregation and how segregation was promoted and advanced in the Democratic Party and only in the Democratic Party, but also about how these segregation laws passed by the Democrats had a peculiar effect across the pond in Europe with a group of people called the Nazis. <music> 